Gundula. I'm a gardener at Babylon Stewarden where we sharing tips on how to be self-sufficient at home. And we are doing a series here. Last time I spoke about location and the challenges that exhibits as well as how to do soil preparation. So today we are looking at how to select the best vegetables for you to grow right now in our winter time here in the Cape. We really get bombarded when we walk into shops with all the choices available and so I think your own spite at home will really be very decisive in what you actually would like to grow at home. If you don't have much space but you'd like to have a fruit tree, maybe something small like a kumquat, even in a pot, will be sufficient. Or you could have a grapevine growing up a pergola and that will provide some nice shelter. However, if you're trying to expand a little bit more and you have more space, um, you could look at all different kinds of herbs, vegetables. But I think a big problem we tend to have is also limited time. So if you don't have much time to grow at home, you might be selecting an indigenous plant like the ribbon bush that will really attract a lot of beneficial insects. And other things like pineapple sage that attract with its flowers that are so continuous, it brings in um, sunbirds as well as all the bees and it's very, very busy and interactive with the wildlife. So these kind of things will really make you decide what you want to focus on, your space and your time available. It's really useful to start with herbs. They tend to be more forgiving, these perennial herbs. And I must say my favorite is rosemary. Um, not just in the garden, but also to use in the kitchen. So I think it's your priorities will stem from what you want to use and what is easy enough for you to grow. Rosemary loves the Cape. It loves the dew that comes off from the sea. Uh, it's very easy to grow in our environment. Um, and that is equally easy in a pot as well as out in the garden. The other herbs that are perennial, that really stretch over a long period of time that are useful for things like the thyme, uh, oregano, um, things that you might like to make iced teas with, things like um, lemongrass, lemon verbena, rose prelegonium, all those kind of herbs really carry on for a very long period. So you get a lot of benefit from it over a very long period. Um, when you're looking at other herbs with soft leaves, um, rocket, coriander, those are things that you'd grow as annuals and those are the things that you can continuously pick from. So if you really don't have much patience <laughs> and you maybe have a young garden where the soil isn't that rich, you want to focus on vegetables you can continually pick. I'm standing here besides the kale, both kales here, you'd really throughout long seasons continually just start picking from below. And this kale here has been going for quite a few months. You can see how long the legs have been growing here. Um, but they're very, very useful for you to have putting in the effort to start off with, but having a really long benefit from which you can harvest them. Many vegetables are very much reliant on sunshine, but the cooler winter weather really allows many vegetables to grow slower, but also prevent them from bolting into flower. Um, this is things like the cabbages, mustards, like the soy we have here, um, cauliflower, broccoli, even your coriander. Those kind of vegetables really enjoy this time of year. I think also what's useful is to consider whether you want to actually have plugs or small little plants that are really prepared and grown to be strong enough to plant out into your garden and really wins at least a month or even more of time when you have some time restraint. Selecting what to sow, well, it really is um, anything you could sow, but what you'd prefer to sow rather than have as a little planted are the root crops. So that would be your carrots, most definitely, and radishes, which are the fastest things to grow by far. You want to impress your children? <laughs> if you get them to sow radishes, it's within days that they sprout, and you can eat them quite readily again, I'd say, a month, or if you have sufficient sunshine, or maybe two months, you'd be harvesting it. Um, beetroot are a bit slow to sprout and grow properly in winter time, but beetroot and turnips, all those kind of things are really useful for growing now, as well as other times of year. Um, other good things to sow are flowers, 
uh, one has sunflowers that you can grow just about any time, but that will be useful for attracting the beneficial insects and the bees. And chamomile is wonderful for enhancing the flavor of many of the vegetables. So sprinkle a few flowers in between. Um, and other herbs like rocket and coriander I find really beneficial, so rather than necessarily growing as seedlings. I'd like to show here an example of companion planting that was planted by little seedlings about three months ago. Um, cabbages are very, very slow growing and hungry plants. And so while these are taking time to expand here and create those big heads, we have interplanted with good companions for cabbage families. Things that really mask the delicious scent that cabbages have for the insects are things like the parsley, um, celery would also work, and leeks, spring onions. So they actually would hide the treasures that take their time to develop here. And in the meantime, these really are ready to start harvesting already. So that you're really very efficient with the space that you have to grow different kinds of crops at the same time and harvest continuously. Mm -hmm.